Honestly, I don't really know if I should be asking you guys this, but I really need to know. You don't think that like someone's gonna come after me and kill me? That was a lot. And I did feel a little bit threatened. It was heartbreaking. But that's not the full story. I mean, you guys need to tell us what happened. Because Delaney, when she found out, she was hysterical. Honestly, up until that point, I'd never had associated or met, you know, anybody that was gay. I really don't want to talk about that. Yeah, look, that's past. Do you think YouTube changed me? I didn't know what I was getting to here. I'm not sure if we want to go into that now. This is not what I signed up for. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Let's Get Into It podcast. Today, we are going to be exposing myself because I have my parents coming on to my show. I want to welcome my mom, Peggy, and my dad, Brady. Yeah. Welcome. How you doing? Hey. They're like, what am I doing here? Like, what is this? Super excited. Super excited. So you guys know we talk about a lot of things on my channel, but we don't really talk about myself. So you guys have been asking, and today I'm going to interview my parents and just kind of like talk about them and like who I am and like where, where did I come from? So... Um, let's go ahead and start off with where you guys grew up. Northern Virginia. Northern yeah. Virginia, both yeah, of you. Both of us, yeah. yeah. And you still live there, kind so you have boring, not. <laughs> yeah, kind of a boring life, but. You never wandered far. Nope. Not too far. We went to high school together, and uh, we started dating right out of high school in 1985. Yeah. And uh, we got married in 93. And Okay, so that was like a really fast forward version of it yeah. all. But um, so all right, let's go ahead and just start like kind of individually. So um, I want to start with like just where your parents. So like. Your mom is Bonnie. Your dad is Buford, who rest in peace. My actually, I have all my grandparents in my life, but my grandfather was the first to pass in September. September twenty second on, on my sister's birthday, right? Yes, Which is like kind of a, and she's getting married on his birthday, so it's kind of a cute connection. It's but. a it's a connection. It's a connection. Yeah, yeah it's, it's nothing an cute about it. Unfortunate connection, but yeah. Yeah, and then are they both from Virginia as well? No, no. My mom's from Chicago, uh -huh. and my dad was from North Carolina. Okay, and then you also don't know any. Because everyone's always like, what is it on, on the internet? They see you and they see dad and then they see me and they're like, what are you, your ethnicity? So then you don't know what your parents are, right? German, German. Um, Swedish. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Okay, dad, so you, well, grandma is uh, Pam. Yep. And then Pappy, what is Pappy's name? Bo. Pappy, Bo. <laughs> yeah, yeah so right. they're both still around too. They're yep. hanging out, chilling. Um, so do you know where they grew up? Grandma's yeah, in Pennsylvania. 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 Yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah, just kind of the middle of Pennsylvania. Not like Philadelphia. No, no, it was like it was Meadville or Sligo, I think. Sligo yeah. was the actual uh, biggest town next to them. I think that the reason I even ever saw Amish people in my life was because of whatever connection we had to Pennsylvania. Because I never like, why would I see Amish people? Like they're not yeah. chilling in Northern Virginia. But I remember growing up, we would whenever we I guess visited Graham. Well, you remember then, Graham took us to uh, a Thanksgiving dinner at an Amish yeah, uh, company yeah. one time. Or, we had dinner in their home. Yeah, in yeah. an Amish family. It was home. Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's cool. So I would have never had any Amish experience if it wasn't for the Pennsylvania connection. Yeah. Do you know what your parents are? Like, like where they're from? Like, are you? I mean, mostly, yeah. What, what I know is uh, German and Dutch. Yeah. You know, my Graham's last name was Hollabaugh, so very Dutch. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, yeah, pretty much that I think. So, I haven't had the test done. The, yeah, the I know. We need. To, I just need to do though. that. Like, why don't I just go ahead and do that? That would answer all the questions. Right. But um, so then, mom, we can confirm you are not Latina. I am. I am not. <laughs> People like speak Spanish to my mom, yeah. thinking that she's like a Latina. And she's, yeah. Nope, not this time. Not Latina. <laughs> no, not that we know of. I mean, we need to do the test. That's right. We tried to do the test with my sister, but then it came back and updated the results and like changed. So you you mentioned that you guys went to high school together, but you weren't like friends, right? Not in high school. No, we knew of each other, um, but no. Why? We were on opposite ends of the spectrum. Why? Uh, why is so? Mom <laughs> sounds classist when she says that. Like, oh, you know, he, I was not hanging out with him. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking well, about? When we grew up, they had smoking courts in school. So this is just an example. Your father would be in the smoking court, and I would not. Yeah, I was in the yeah. free kind of yeah. division. <laughs> you know, wore moccasins and had long hair, and I was not. In the same crowd. So wait, was that like the hippie? Was that seventies or eighties? That was 80s. the eighties. Eighties. Yeah. Wait, what happened in eighty five? You got married. You graduated. No, high no, no, no. We graduated, graduated high graduated. school. High school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like that sounds like seventies moccasins, mm -hmm. right? Like hippy dippy. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't he too was much in moccasins. Back, uh, making them cool again. I may have a <sighs> one pair at one time in my right. life. Let's not <laughs> overdo it too much. <laughs> I just remember seeing you in moccasins. Yeah. yeah. It's a hard, a hard thing to shed. Ingrained into your memory. <laughs> Very difficult that to lose that. Yeah. that was her first ick. That was her first ick with right. you. <laughs> yeah. And we'll uh, forget that. First of many. So then, um, but you 
didn't so you're not high school sweethearts technically right because no. you didn't like date in high school right. So, no, right after high school so we graduated in june of 85 and we started running around together in july of 85 oh, okay so like right after high school right after high right school after. and you guys neither of you went to college i know you did a little like community college mm -hmm. for a bit it wasn't for you so then what were your plans right after high school i uh ended up getting a job i had a couple of jobs but mm -hmm. like 21 i ended up getting a job with exxon mobile Mm. And like doing what, like corporate work? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was just yeah. mobile like, back in the day. It was just mobile. Now it's yeah. Exxon Mobile. What yeah. is that thing that on uh, that trend on TikTok where people are saying like calling their parents and saying, I just got a job to be a drill, like yeah, a, yeah. Underground, underwater. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you weren't that. <laughs> I wasn't. No, I wasn't that. I worked in like information systems, but I worked there um, when your dad and I got married and then uh, until I had you and mm -hmm. then he wanted me to stay home. And so I was a stay at home mom after that. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah. what were you doing, big baller, that she could stay at home? Mm -hmm. <laughs> big baller. Uh, you know, as a plumber, we just make uh, hand over fist money. Mm -hmm. So, no, it was very tight to, to to have her stay at home, but it was very important mm -hmm. to me. You know, it was very important to us that uh, that we raised you had a full time. Yeah, yeah, had a full time parent there all the time. So. Yeah, and then luckily it worked out nice. So my dad actually runs a successful like plumbing company. You guys do a lot of like variety of work. I remember growing up and like. I went to Foxcroft, which was at like boarding school at yep. one point. Yep. But, but you uh, have a, they have like, you know, a lot of work and different types profile. of work. And that's something yeah. that you Custom. got into because of your father, yeah, my we grandfather. Do mostly, mostly custom type uh, plumbing work, if you can say uh -huh. yeah, custom. So yeah, it's been pretty neat. We had some really, uh, really neat clients. So then you just kind of went into that right after high school because your dad had the company and it was just easy, well, like he, work easy to he get into it. He actually asked me to, to, to come to work for him. I was working for a, a carpenter actually when I first got out of high school and then uh, worked for them for quite a few months. And then Pappy came to me and said, hey, you know, we're really busy and, uh, you know, do you want to come to work? And I said, wow, oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. And then, yeah. the, but, you know, just to kind of, Funny story is uh, I was making five dollars an hour, and I just made the the carpenter uh, just raised me to five fifty an hour. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, they were really happy with me. So uh, anyway, I start working for Pappy now, and he uh, dropped me. I got my first paycheck, and I went back down to five dollars an hour. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So going to work for him wasn't necessarily a monetarily uh, smart. He was like, "We'll match your pay a year ago." Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of how it worked out. So then, was that ever? I mean, it's kind of been like a family business in some sense. We've had some family members work for us, and then not, and that. I mean, did you enjoy that experience working with your dad? Was it kind of? Odd. It was I mean, always that was always kind of stressful, you know. I didn't necessarily work with him in the field a whole lot at that uh, time, yeah. you know. When I was younger, in my teen years, like during the summers and things, I'd mm -hmm. work for him, and I'd more, work closer side by side. But by the time I came to work for him, it was uh, he was out of the field for the most part. So, you know, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it's always kind of weird. I mean, imagine if you worked for me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, right. I mean, I did for a little bit. Well, I yeah, did. you did. And, I, and now yeah. look at me. I was like, let me go and do something else. Yeah, but you were a good blower. You, you picked up stuff. I was good at hiding somewhere in the corner. Yeah. No, he liked to go into the clients' homes, the beautiful homes, and sit and talk with them. Right. And right. then they would call me and be like, I met your son today. He's amazing. Try and make some connections. <laughs> yeah. right. Like, how could you help me? Um, so before we get into a little bit about me and, you know, early life has Sloan, um, just I think a lot of people like to hear about someone's first date. So how did you what was your first? Oh, my God. <laughs> was it a date? <laughs> no. I'll, I'll leave it alone. You go ahead and tell I, it on. I, well, you guys just met out? We were out at a bar. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And we started. Love at first sight? <laughs> Something at first something, sight. Something. <laughs> something at first sight. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, so when you guys, you guys got married at what, 25? Because you had me at 26, right? No. We got engaged at 25, married at 26, and we had you at 27. I was matter. eight months pregnant on my first anniversary. Okay, and did you, um, you just, you always knew you wanted kids, right? We knew we wanted to have kids. And so we, we decided that we wanted to not wait. Mm -hmm. Your dad decided that he didn't want to wait, and I didn't want to wait either. I knew I was... That was my calling in life was to be a mom. Yeah. And so we were very fortunate enough to be able to conceive you very quickly. So I'm named after my father. How did we come up with Sloan? Do you know? We were out with friends yep. at a bowling alley and we met this girl. Um, she was pregnant. I, I don't really know who she is, her, but her <laughs> name was Sloan. With an E? She was. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's like the she female. She was friends with our other friends and we loved the name so much that um, we used it. I actually wanted to name you something different. Do you know what? I wanted to name you 
um, Michael Steven okay. after your your uncle, your dad's yeah. brother. Well, then my and, brother got that name. Yeah. So yeah, so your dad wasn't ready to use that name, so mm-hmm. we picked Sloan, and I love that name. I still love that name to this day. It works out until yeah. I hear someone say like "slow," and then I'm like, "Wait, what? <laughs> Me?" <laughs> or uh, or they're like, I just peed on your name in the bathroom. Yeah, right. That was right. Like, yeah. <laughs> Had a little something to do with it. I'm like, at least it's usually waterless. It's like, you know, eco-friendly in some way. There so at least there's some good parts to it. So, um, bef- you know, I have two other siblings, but I'm the oldest. So um, uh, how would you explain my like behavior or demeanor as like a child? Like, was I easygoing? Um, Definitely not easygoing. <laughs> no, you were... I, I really feel like you always had a very strong personality mm. and and you you definitely exhibited that from a very young age because you you were absolutely beautiful. You were born with a full head of hair <laughs> um, and you were a beautiful child and people were drawn to you because you were so attractive and they would approach you and you would scowl at them like literally growl. <laughs> I said them like, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like no, that. get away <laughs> from me. I just me. didn't want anyone touching me. You didn't want anybody near you. Yeah. D- yes. I kind of feel the same way. Like that guy at the gym this morning, I was just like, oh god, leave me alone. <laughs> like god. I'm like you guys think I'm so outgoing whenever I'm here with my camera and I am outgoing, but I also feel like I do. I mean, once you get to know somebody, you're certainly different. But this is like out at a restaurant when somebody tries to, you know. Oh, my gosh, she's so cute. And you're like, (laughs) just like, "Mm." stay away. (laughs) Like, you had to claw them. (laughs) But you were always very leery of people and very concerned about your brother and sister. Like, we couldn't get on an elevator without it being a whole ordeal. You blocking the door, making sure everybody's in safe. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I was so scared of elevators as a kid. I remember going to Ocean City, right? Exactly. Um, You were so scared of losing losing track of your brother or or sister. Like, they would be left outside the door that you just couldn't handle. Why was I so worried about that? I don't know. know. Like, was it just me being, like, I guess, like a possessive kid over them? Just, like, trying to make, like, watching their every move? Always watching their every move. Always concerned, yeah. Yeah. Mm, sounds stressful. Stressing mm. me out. Like, I probably, though, whenever I have kids one day, I'm probably going to be like that just too. By just the time like we had micromanaging. Three, and you pretty much just took care of it. We weren't necessarily yeah. too worried. <laughs> we didn't have to worry about we anything. We were in the, in the elevator hitting the down button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have everything covered, That's like right. shuffling them through. Yeah. We didn't have a whole lot to do. <laughs> so then I, I guess, obviously, as a brother, I was super um, protective initially. So then I, I growing up, like elementary school, Middle school, I remember I started getting into, like, making videos. I mean, I was pretty young. Do you remember that little green camcorder I had mm-hmm. when I first got, like... I still have it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's an old camera from... I remember I would, like, try to set it up to, like, film the Easter Bunny or something. You, to you see did if it was get weird. me yeah. do, making <laughs> yeah. Easter baskets. I did do it. Absolutely. Um, so that was, uh, you know, I was, I guess, creative in that way. I don't think I'm... I don't consider myself a very creative person, especially when you meet, like, these actors, theater people, artists, like, people who can actually paint you know, like I'm. It, oh, you were very creative, but uh, I guess. But then, what did you? I mean, you saw me making videos in like you know the seventh grade, filming Delaney, doing these random right. things. Um, what did you think of it back then? I mean, did you just think it was like a normal kid thing to do for? Mm-mm. No, I thought, I definitely thought you were destined for something creative in your life. I mean, you, you took an initiative and wanted to be in plays so you auditioned for musicals that were through one of the the larger high schools around us and I mean closed auditions you went in there and just killed it you got everything you ever wanted to do I mean you (laughs) you just and and I was mortified because I couldn't go in with you and I'm like what's going on you were like 10 years old we had to get you a cell phone because you had to go to auditions or, or to rehearsals and yeah I was the only one in fifth grade that had a phone because um I would go to these Day, the acting days would be like a Saturday yeah. and be full all, all day. day. I remember also being 10 years old and like having to go and buy lunch for myself at the burger place and just it was such a weird <laughs> thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Crazy. But the older kids are like some, it was like a yeah. program where it was like a bunch of different ages, but there was like people who are 18 or so in it. So they would take care of me and make sure I was like, you know, you safe. Were, <laughs> walking to the place, yeah, you know, right. safely because right. I would not have to go outside and the city and do that. You also started swimming when you were six years old. So you swam for. A good. I was like eighteen, really. Yeah, I mean, a, a very long time. You did competitive swimming, you and your sister, and we're very good. And that was because of you, right? You grew up doing competitive I swimming. I swam, yes, but you know, it was. I felt like it was a great sport for y'all, and it definitely taught you discipline. Yeah, I mean, I think it helped also with fitness too. It just gave mm-hmm. you a good base fit. Like when I was in, you know, high school, I had like abs just because we were doing so much dry land and right. yeah, swimming, definitely. club swim, high school swim, yep. county swim. 
Luckily, I have been thankful that my family has been super accepting with my sexuality, especially with, um, you know, how it was 10, 15 years ago. It was not easy, and I came out pretty young. So I think that it's important to acknowledge that because there are families out there who, you know, accept you and will um, want to embrace that side of you. I mean, my family, we've gone to drag brunch already. I mean, they're out <laughs> in West Hollywood. We saw Erica Jane last night. My mom got a picture of Tom Sandoval. Mm. Like, you know, they're here with here for the queer or whatever. <laughs> and I think that really goes back to some of the past that my parents have experienced with like my uncle and things like that. And my dad had a, you know, exposure to a gay man early on in his life. Can you talk a little bit about like Uncle Steven? And absolutely. Like, do you think that did kind of prepare you to accept me easier? It, it absolutely. It changed. Uh, it changed our life. I mean, we, I grew up in a very small town. She's you know? your older brother, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, grew up in a very small town, almost like nothing around us but kind of farms and things. And uh -huh. is know, that Fairfax, Virginia? That mm -hmm. was center. Of, well, Fairfairfax, but then it's Fairfax so County. But back then it was. So it, was it really farmland. was not built up. Right? No, it was so no. Built up Centerville now. was okay. really, really uh, small, and that's when um, that's when he came out. You know, whenever we realized it, and, and Graham told us and things. Uh, uh, so Graham told you, and he I told Graham. That's probably how it played out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think we always had maybe a little bit of a different uh, idea that you know because he was he was a fun guy. I mean, he just a such a, a sweetheart of a person. Um, uh, always thought about somebody else. I mean, it reminds me so much of you because you always put a lot of people in front of you and things. And, and, and he was the same way. And, um, and what time, like just not to interrupt you, but when, when he came out, what time period was this? Because I feel like we, he came out too, is such a crucial. I was probably, I was in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was 13. Mm -hmm. when, whenever uh, oh when you I found realized, out that I realized yeah yeah so. that was in the late 70s do you remember when you heard about it because I feel like I remember I don't know if this story is true because obviously I've heard this years ago mm -hmm. but like my understanding was that when you heard that Uncle Stephen was gay it was so like overwhelming to you like just except that you like, ran and you were crying and like in the it was it was definitely do you remember it, it that was, moment you found it, out like your reaction like you felt like I do because I was, uh, you know, I was just, I don't know. I kind of felt sad a little bit just cause, you know, I don't know why. I don't yeah. know why it affected me. I, I honestly, up until that point, I'd never had associated or met, you know, anybody that was gay. Not, there just wasn't anybody around. I probably mm -hmm. did. They just weren't out. Um, but, but yeah, uh, but Steve was just such a great personality. So mm -hmm. it, it really, you know, there, there might've been that initial, kind of shock if you want to say that uh but but it it really changed um shortly after that because he included me in his life mm -hmm. you know and it, he actually took me to my first gay bar and yeah, stuff like that funny. you know when i was underage you know yeah. but uh he he opened my eyes to uh to realize hey man this isn't uh these people aren't uh, weird. They're not the devil. You know what yeah. I mean? This isn't, you know, I grew up in a, a, a fairly Christian Graham home. Graham has always know? been super, like, end of the faith. So yeah, like yeah. That. And it was. And I, I did a year at Christian school and things. So, it, you know, they, they definitely kind of beat that up a little bit um, and, and made you Especially back think then. a certain way. Right. They, they wanted you to think a certain way. But uh, actually, after after Steve came out and, and we started to enjoy ourselves out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was just always a, a inspiration and 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 yeah I think it it, it totally helped me with uh, uh, you know if I needed help whenever whenever you came out it was mm -hmm. just a you know a, a, exposure yeah no it was yeah 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 so um, unfortunately I never met my uncle Steve he passed away from each one yeah. Yeah. yeah which one do you use if he passed away from it was it AIDS H okay H so you yeah. passed away of AIDS which I think is important to highlight because you know luckily we have prep nowadays and you know, the community has become very aware. I know back then it was such a struggle to oh be gosh. sick. I mean, you guys, I remember towards the end of his life, you guys took care of him. Mom would mm -hmm. go and get his haircuts mm -hmm. for him. And take you him would, shopping and, and I remember mom, you told me like you would, you would even lie about like what he's going through because people, people are so ask. judgmental, right? Yeah. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah, yeah. They would look at him like, Oh, what's, what's he got? And I, I would never, you know, I didn't feel it was anybody's right to know. Mm -hmm. And he was certainly safe in not putting anybody in jeopardy. So it, you know, Nobody needed to know that. Yeah. And so he was living in Germany with his partner until he fell ill there enough to where he had to come here. And that was for, do you know why his partner didn't take care of him? The health care is better here. Oh, so he yeah. came yeah. here for better treatment. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So then you, then do you live with like Graham or do you live with like, with and Graham. then you guys would go and help Graham with taking well, care I of him? Well, I lived there at that time. So, oh, you did? Uh, yeah. And it was. Oh, it you was were dating, right? Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was very difficult because I, you know, 
your uncle was 230 pounds and just built. I mean, you know, he was very proud of his physique and he worked very hard on it. Um, and just to kind of see how this horrible disease takes over you. He was 125 pounds laying yeah. in bed yeah. and, and we literally changed him and, you know, and, and had to make sure we, you know, moved him around so he didn't get bed sores. It was, it was, Heartbreaking. I yeah, mean, it was just a very difficult time, but uh, he still always wanted to go out and see the cherry blossoms. And yeah, we took we him, took him to, to see the cherry yeah, blossoms. Yeah. yeah, so, but uh, very difficult time that time. Yeah, and that's why now my brother has the middle name Steve to honor yep. Uncle yeah. Steve, and his, we're still his, talking actually, about him today. his first name is Stephen. Stephen. Yeah. yeah his, oh yeah. You, no, my, all you boys go by yeah, your Stephen middle name. Jared. Okay. Yeah. yeah and I'm Michael Sloan, Sloan after yeah. Dad. Um, so then obviously like with that kind of experience, it made it easier for when I came out, even, even, even the, despite coming out at like 15, which is pretty young, but you were 14, 14, but I, know, I was 14. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I knew for many, 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 many years, but mm-hmm. I wanted you to come to me with it and I didn't want to go to you with it, but I had went to your dad for many, many years prior to that and said, mm-hmm. yeah, I think he, I think he's gay. Let's play it out. Let's play it out. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so a lot of people were asking about my coming out story, so I thought I might as well share it. Essentially, I came out to my grandmother, Graham, who had Stephen and uh, Stephen, was Stephen right? Stephen. I, I feel like I'm saying Steve. Yeah. Stephen and my father. So then I felt like she was kind of, I mean, I was close to her then, and she also like had experience with that, so that's who I told. And then she told my parents. So I didn't directly come to you and say, I'm gay. You asked me about it. Because Graham emailed you. That no, that's, that's not my how I, re- that's memory. That's not how I remember anything. We were in at the all. car driving to swim team, and I was sitting in the back, and I remember you told me no, Graham no, emailed no. me no. and told me what you guys talked about. No, that's not. That's how it my happened. memory. So, yeah. what's your memory of me coming out? So we were driving to swim, and okay. your sister was like, "Tell her, Sloan, tell her, tell her," because you had told Delaney, uh-huh. and you said, "I'm gay," and I said, "I know." Your grandmother never emailed me or told me anything. And your grandmother and I would discuss it throughout the years because she, uh, just like I did, suspected that maybe you were gay. And that was mm-hmm. okay. And we would talk about it because she had experience with it. But she never she never came to I me I just have a completely me. different memory. Like, yeah. I remember you guys knew before Delaney. Because Delaney, when she found out, she was hysterical. I just she was knew. like, I don't want my children to get... Like, so there was something... There was no me hiding that. Like Delaney couldn't hide that from you guys. So you guys knew before her because... She like was hysterical. I mean, I, I always her. knew, and I don't. You guys never shared. Well, now you always knew, but I'm just telling but... you, like, yeah. I mean, she was like, I can't have a, I don't want children to have a gay uncle or and those things. I mean, and you know, of course, she's like 11 years old. Like, right. she's a kid. I don't. I'm not writing it off, but I'm just saying it's so interesting that you have a whole other story because mine. What I remember being in the basement talking to Graham about it. Literally the next day is when that happened, mm-hmm. when we had the swim team thing. And then that night is when I talked to Delaney about it, and that's when she got hysterical. I don't recall any of that. Yeah. No. I don't know. Maybe I need to just dive deeper yeah. in therapy and figure out when that happened, because <laughs> that's my memory of it. I don't know. Maybe. Do you remember it? No. Oh, I remember you actually uh, coming to me, and I was in the family room, and I was sitting in my chair, uh-huh. and you came down. And I, I kind of, I had already you know, assumed and things yeah. like that. But, uh, but the, the, the evening that you came to me, uh, and you just, you came out and you just said, Hey dad, I'm gay. Uh-huh. Was, you know, and it was, uh, it was definitely emotional just because I felt a closer connection with you, you know, for you to be mm-hmm. confident enough to come out and, and, and talk to us about it. I thought that was, uh, really great. It was, uh, you know, it's definitely a, a tearjerker moment, but I don't know that it was sadness. You know, yeah. I think it was maybe more, Hey man, you're finally finding yourself and, and you'll be able to maybe mm-hmm. be stronger for yourself. Cause I know it's difficult for some, some gay, uh, oh, it's people, to, every gay person. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's all, it's very difficult. And I, and I saw that difficulty with Steve, you know, mm-hmm. I, I saw that difficulty with people not wanting to him for, to come into a restaurant and things. And, and I so didn't want that for you. And, yeah. I, and I'm, so thankful that 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 time has kind of corrected itself and 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 made things definitely easier yeah Yeah. definitely easier but but it was very emotional when you came to me and um and and i believe that was kind of the the internal feeling that i had was Mm -hmm. gosh man i'm I'm glad yeah there's feelings of i mean also with steve too that makes sense because it's like you watched him go through all that it's like oh i wouldn't want that oh it was so scary whenever you saw people so standoffish and you know it was just a it was a bummer man it really sucked yeah yeah 
too bad he couldn't see the gayest city in the world. Oh my god, yeah. he, he would love. He would have <laughs> loved, loved it. it. Yeah, he would have fit right in. Absolutely. I mean, he's looking down on you right I now. I know. So Imagine proud. if he was around and he could like. I was like friends with the gay because I don't have any other gay family members. I don't think. Oh, you'd my, probably be yeah. next to their um, neighbors or something. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's go ahead and finish by talking a little bit about my career on YouTube. Obviously, that's changed my life a lot. Um, and you know, when it changes my life, it also affects my family in some ways too. So I just want to talk a little bit about like, what were your initial, I mean, like we discussed earlier, I made videos growing up, so it wasn't new for me to go and post a video online, but it was new when I started getting some traction. So when that started to pick up, do you remember kind of what you thought about it or was it just like, you know, used to it because you saw me posting? Mm, I mean, I, I think we were always definitely supportive of it. However, it was important to us that you got a college education. Mm Mm-hmm. And you remember when you came out of college and you went to work for corporate for a couple of years, I was very scared of you leaving that just because of the unknown and what you wanted to do. But I think your dad and I were always supportive and knew that you would be successful. I mean, when he made that video at the pool, with down Annie. by the pool with Annie, when you were exercising I, sent our dog. That, <laughs> I sent that to Ellen. I mean, because I, I loved it so much. I thought it was the best thing I'd ever seen in my life. You made great. some really... I made so videos. many goofy videos growing up, too. Yeah. I just yeah. didn't know what I was doing, you know? Yeah, but Annie was a, a big focal part yeah. For, yeah. for a while. She, she, she uh, You had her dancing and things. And I would have her in my and, videos. I'd pull my desk chair up next to me, sit by the window, and yeah. have her sitting just on the desk chair she just was a facing great the camera. <laughs> yeah, I have some videos out there that you guys can find her in there. Um, so when I started to get more and more views, and, you know, I mean, even myself, I didn't ever think I'd be doing YouTube full-time. I didn't think that there was really you know, even the bandwidth to support you financially in YouTube. Like I felt great in my corporate job. It was, you know, secure. This was like a fun little hobby. So then when I started to become more successful at it and like actually take it, you know, uh, full time, um, did you have like reservations about me leaving that job? I mean, at that point I was kind of, I left a six year long relationship. I was leaving my career and I was just going to move into Airbnbs in Florida. So, um, and that's what you did. (laughs) I mean, do you remember those like kind of having like, just being nervous about it or I think once you you decided to leave you I don't know I I don't remember feeling nervous about it I was nervous prior to yeah. you making that decision but once you made the decision I I didn't I've never had any fears about what you're doing you know f- as far as from a success standpoint I yeah. always thought you would be successful and you're I mean your dad and I have been just incredibly proud of what you've done Absolutely, I I was a little bit nervous, you know. I, I wanted you to kind of ride that job out because it was a it was, it was a great it. job yeah. coming out of college. I mean, at, at that year, you know, people were coming out of college and their kids had nothing to go to. You mm-hmm. know, they would, couldn't but, get jobs. But you, you you got a nice job, and then you started focusing on your your YouTube stuff, and that uh, yeah, it was exciting. You know, it was mm-hmm. nice, and 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 you were pretty open with us. You know, as far as like you know how you were being paid and, and that yeah. you were able to make a living at it, and um, but but once you got to your certain level, I just I I knew you were smart enough to to make your decisions, and you you're smart enough to to know not to gamble too much on 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 yeah. uh, you know being successful and, and yeah. being able to take care of yourself. Yeah, it doesn't. Social media doesn't last forever, so a lot of people when they're in this industry, they need to be smart with their money, just because you never know your channel could be deleted. Be canceled. Oh, like, who, canceled. No one wants to yeah. get canceled. You know, it's crazy. We're not getting canceled over here. Do you think um, some people will criticize, you know, those who jump into this career and who have this kind of success and be like, YouTube changed you? Do you think YouTube changed me? Not to me. I don't. I don't feel like no. it changed you. No, I don't. Uh, I feel honestly, like you're the same yeah. person. I don't see a difference. I, I see you being more generous because you're <laughs> yeah. able to, you're certainly able to be more generous, with, yeah. but that's great. I mean, it's, 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 uh, but you always been very smart with, um, you know, what you want to do and yeah. what you want to do next and things like that. I mean, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're focused and it, and it shows, and I'm very proud of that. Do you watch my content? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Like what, like you just will put it on when you're like sitting down or like what? Yeah. Put it on the background, or what do you do? Well, Instagram's no. daily. I mean, I, yeah. you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I watch your Instagram stories daily. That's how I know, you know, kind of keep up with you and things. Uh, 
But no, yeah, when, after work, you know, I get home, get a little time, we just pop you on and see what's Dad uh, would be like reading the comments. Like, is it weird <laughs> to see? He loves to read the comments. I love the comments, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, never read my comments. No, nah, they're so everybody's so supportive of you. It's so it's so great. It's really it's cool. That's what yeah. I that's my favorite part of it. I do enjoy the stories and things. Uh uh you you bring up some great subjects and and cover them very well, but uh but to be able to see how many people that you touch and 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 you know, have a decent yeah. relationship with. They're they're very supportive of. I love your fan base. <laughs> fan base. See, it's so weird because I still don't have it fully. Like, I'm not. I haven't fully accepted. That I get hundreds of thousands of views, and I've got thousands of people who are watching my videos and those type of things. And it still doesn't like even make sense to me. Do you think it's weird seeing people comment or talk about your son in some ways? I mean, we've had some hard moments too with YouTube with <laughs> Nick Carter, Mike the Situation. <laughs> I mean Bob Sag was coming after me for a while, but he wasn't coming after you, but he was coming after me. We've definitely you, had people come after us. Too. Well, Especially because yeah. my dad has the same name as me. So when you guys go and hire your private investigators and you think you're harassing me, <laughs> you're actually harassing him. Yeah, yeah. I, I get some crazy text messages at like three in the morning and things yeah. and it, it's like, hey Phone we're gonna we're gonna expose this and expose that and and I I kind of get a, a, I don't know how to he, say it. A, a rise I, out of it? Well, not a rise, but but I get defense. <laughs> yeah, you fight back. Yes. I get defense. <laughs> yes. you know, and I, I, yeah, I, I have no problem sending a picture of myself out and saying, you know what, this is what I look like, and, and you can come after me. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, yeah. But no, it, it's, it's, it's definitely concerning. You know, it, it's something that we're worried about you. You're out here. You're so far away from us. But um, uh <laughs> But yeah, it's kind of creepy. Those yeah, people it's creepy. also kind of cool though that these people know who I am. I'm like, yeah, I right? feel like I'm just sitting in my room. Like, <laughs> why is how did my even like um, uh, Angelina from her name's Angelina, right? From Jersey Shore, yeah, messaging me last night at midnight right. saying, uh, "Hey, I have a question for you." Like, girl, Angelina, what do you need from me? Like, right. why are these people? How did you find me? Yeah, I wasn't right. talking about you anywhere. Um, can you tell a little bit about that pizza story? Like, oh my gosh, so <laughs> your dad. We go to bed very early, and we have lots of dogs, and. One night we were in bed and our somebody started knocking on our door. A ring's going off. And it was a pizza delivery truck. No, there wasn't only one. There was like four different that showed up at the same time. And we had no idea that this was a thing. Apparently you were shooting a live video. I always live stream because back then I would live stream. I don't do that nowadays. And this is kind of common for people who live stream because they think they're going to the home. And we had where you no are. idea. And so we had all these people coming up to our door. And your father is... I mean, he's a armed, yeah, he's an armed a, man, and he's I, I not afraid to use it. Amendment. Truly, it was scary. I mean, it was scary to have all these people like around in our front yard and just randomly there. And yeah. so well, we were swatted, but by pizza people. Right. <laughs> it and wasn't yes. the FBI coming in or anything, right. but it was pizza people. So these yeah. people called like nuts. four different, three different pizza places, oh, at least. right? And yeah. then they had like them all come looking for cash, right? Because they yeah. did like a cash order. Which why did they even allow that nowadays? Like yeah. they shouldn't. Yeah. yeah. Like who who does that? It's like just setting yourself up for failure. We're you know got the door cracked and got a gun. And it's like <laughs> who are you? Uh, uh -huh. You need to step back. <laughs> so because you've seen and also it's nice. That you guys are talking about this too, because sometimes people think I make this stuff up. I'm like, no. Oh no. The, he, he, my dad did receive an edited nude picture of me. Like oh, it did yeah. happen. Like that was this crazy. And your sister has. <laughs> and my and sister has. Yeah. So, um, do you? Because I talk about various topics online and different celebrities. I feel like you guys, because we've gone through all this together, you don't really worry about my safety when it comes to like these celebrities. Like you don't think that like, you know, someone's going to come after me and kill me. I mean. I <sighs> With the Nick Carter thing, and that was a lot. That was that was a lot, and I did feel a little bit threatened personally. Um, Remember that one random girl like knocked on your door too one day or something? It was a guy or girl. Yeah, I this mean, then some some strange things happen, and and you do have that element of fear for a second. Yeah, and then you realize, you know, they're just it's idle threats. I do believe. Yeah. Um, you kind of get over that and realize where it's coming from and what they're actually going to do, which yeah. is nothing. Well, we talk about things that people don't want out there all the time. So right. it pushes, you know, it, it pushes their emotions. And sometimes, like, you know, they want to handle it the legal way. They don't actually want to. Because do we really want to uncover what we're talking about here? Because I'm not spreading lies. I'm not putting anything fake out there. I'm not purposely. And if I were to, then they can come on you know, yeah. my show. Right. And, right. And right. then collect, uh, correct the record. I'll remove the video for that. So um, to give a little bit more information about our, our other family members. So let's just talk about my siblings as well. So, I'm, I mean, I don't think... 
Delaney or Jared have ever appeared on my channel or anything. So Delaney is 25 or 26? 25. 25. Uh, so she's my younger sister. She's engaged. I'm actually going to be marrying her this year, officiating the wedding. That's yes. going to be awesome. Which, like, of course, like the star of the family here. <laughs> like, I can give a performance. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, But uh, so Delaney, what does she do for work? She is a high school special ed teacher. Mm -hmm. And she, does she focus on like math specifically? She or? is a math teacher, yes. Which is like kind of interesting because I thought like you know there's that stigma that like girls don't do math and Delaney's over here like teaching math now. She's got her right. master's in yeah, yeah. 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 So, so she's got her master's in special ed. Yeah. So she can really teach anything, but um, where she fell into the school system, she is a special ed math teacher. Uh huh. And I feel like my sister has one of those like she has that like life that everyone's like you know, expects to happen, like anticipate, you know, she's like right. now gotten engaged at like 25, like looking to buy a house, going to yeah. get married, probably going to have kids like around the same age as you right. guys. Like it's been pretty, pretty much, kind of perfect. It's yeah. Yeah. Kind of story like you guys. Book. I mean, Storybook. Yeah. 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 It's even with um, Robert. So my brother, future brother-in-law, like he's a year younger than me, but we all grew up in the same neighborhood, like streets yeah. away. So Robert was always around in our lives and, you know, Delaney and him obviously didn't date or have anything until like later in life. Right. Because they, there was enough age difference. Like when <laughs> would have been weird, I guess more and he's a uh, senior you know yeah. that's too much of an age difference but he would come over and hang out with you and all your buddies in the neighborhood and yeah. so yeah he was from very young he was at our home and part of our you know we we knew him and his family um and so yeah they just happened to start dating a few years ago and the rest is history yeah it is almost so, history. yeah almost a <laughs> couple more months yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting just because my life feels so like, so chaotic in comparison with just like moving around and just like even what i do for a career delaney like she's oh, your nice stable day. child yeah she's the one that's like going to be around yeah i'm going to have the kids like right away and all those things and then my younger brother he's 22 he's going to be 23 um in a couple days. Oh. this next saturday yeah he's always around easter right Yes. Yeah. So he's kind of doing his own thing. He's been like, he's worked with my dad yep. and, you know. Yeah, he'll work with us again, I'm sure. He's yeah. just figuring yeah. himself out. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's also like a kid, so, yeah. you know, those things happen. Are you excited for Delaney to have kids? <laughs> I know you uh, want to be a grandma so bad. Uh, like my Your mom... dad wants to be a grandpa, too. Don't yeah. be old. We are both so excited for grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like a grandpa to Bunny, you know. Yeah, now. we have our but, grand dog with us now. A grand so. dog, so... <laughs> A lot That's of people nice. have asked, like, where's Bunny gone? Because Bunny would be in podcast, she'd be on the main channel. But with um, just so many things changing my life, me moving into a new place and things and traveling, I mean, sometimes getting a dog sitter costs more than just the trip I was going to take. So just for right now, my parents have five other dogs. So Bunny is ruling the castle, she living is. her best life. I would actually feel kind of guilty bringing her back here because what if I have to go to a work event or do something and then my dog is there for six hours alone? Like, I don't want that for her. She's so never alone. It's now. the best thing for her for now. So that's why right. people are like, did you give up, Bunny? Like, no, she's not in a pound. She grew up. <laughs> And she wanted to move out. Yeah. And now she's she out moved here in with her grandparents. Paying That's rent. Right. That's all. Just kidding. At least I'm paying for the haircuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least that part. So it just like with where I'm at in my life, I mean, obviously with the uh, career I had and then this career and everything, like, what do you think is going to, I'm, you know, approaching 30 later this year. What do you think is going to happen for me, what do you see happening? You know, I'm I'm shocked you're not on television yet. I, I really <laughs> thought. I mean, it's, I really thought you uh, before YouTube and things. Uh, I thought you could model, you know, for sure. I, I always thought you had a, a good modeling uh, look and things like that. And a lot, a lot of our friends did too. Oh, you yeah. know, they would always mention. Um, Why isn't he modeling? But now, you know, since YouTube has started and, and kind of blown up a little bit and, and things are going great, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that like, you know, Access Hollywood or something hasn't hit you up. I, I kind of, you know, and I think that yeah. might still be in the future. I, re I really do. But uh, whatever you do, you're going to be successful at it. You're just, uh, mm -hmm. and as long as you're happy, at it then that's that's all that matters yeah. and you're yeah. very driven i mean mm -hmm. you want it and you go for it and i don't think there's much you can't accomplish i do want to have like the sloan show one day which you know it's a, it's a weird time in entertainment because it's almost like i have more power now with what i'm doing than those access hollywood people you know sure. like, not like saying like, oh it's a pay cut but it's just even the in like the impact they have with the ability of people they reach it's just like kind of limited so it's like that weird point where i'm like don't want to go there yet but i also want to go up here so um hopefully with the show i have coming out later this year with spill sash you guys will see a lot more elevated content like yeah, that. Yeah, we're excited about that. She's great. I know, she's great. My parents she's hung great. out with Christy the other night. We like went out and had some drinks and they've been living it up. So let's go mm -hmm. ahead and finish the podcast by just talking about what are we doing this trip. So Friday I picked you guys up. Yeah. 
We got, what did we get for lunch? We went to the Grove. <laughs> yeah, because my mom loves this place Why, at the Grove. Yes, and I, and we never even look at what the name is, but it, <laughs> I don't, I don't we know. got we go there every poke time. bowls and lobster, lobster rolls, rolls, and they were fantastic. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we came home. I think we relaxed for a bit, right? And then we went out. Yes. Oh, wait, we, we oh. kind of started early that night. Yeah. Christy came over. Christy came over. She, yeah, we did start early. We didn't really relax. She came over, <laughs> and we went... Um, where did we go? Well, Thomas came over and then we went out, right? Yes. We went to high tops. tops. High tops. Yeah, high tops. And then you were kind of tired, so I took you back. Yes. And then yeah. me and Dad were partying. We you stayed know. out a little bit. The next day, the drag queens were like, oh, there's <laughs> Lil's Dad. Like, <laughs> and then we went to drag brunch yesterday at the Abbey. We were there for like three hours. That was fun. Yeah, that was, that cool. was fun. Yeah. Did you, um, what do you, I mean, so you guys enjoy the drag queens? Yeah. Do. Oh, yeah. I love it. You don't think it's like weird or whatever? You're just like, what is no. this? Oh, no. It's entertaining. No. I mean, these, these, they are so uh, fit and so yeah. talented. It's just, it's really, it's fun. It's a fun experience. Yeah, I agree. It's, and it's cool that we have it everywhere here. It's just like that one yeah. place in the country where you just have every bar has got a drag queen performing. Yeah, so we did that yesterday, and then we went to to, to the fashion show. Oh, yeah, we yeah. went to that fashion show yeah. Um, last night. That and was then, super cool. Yeah, like, that was cool. So it was for Michael No, and yes. he did an event at a club called Heart. And my mom, like, likes the Bravo of it all, like the Vanderpumps, I the love it. Housewife. So Erica Jane was there. And she was speaking on stage. Tom Sandoval was there. Mom got a picture with him. Yeah. <laughs> he's so, so tall. He's he's so, he's I really thought he was so guy. much smaller, like seeing him on TV, but he was he was quite large. Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. So then we're gonna go to Palm Springs tomorrow. They've never been yeah. to Palm Springs before. So I thought that would yeah, be cool. Yeah, we're excited for that. Yeah, and it's gonna be hot and there's gonna be casinos because they like to gamble. That's right. <laughs> Wait, tell bit. them about your recent win. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> now I hit uh, hit a spin on a, a just a, a slot machine. I was betting a dollar, and 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 next thing I know, I kept watching the the screen, and it was you know five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars. Anyhow, it went to uh, I won a grand prize of like eleven thousand dollars. Yeah, which off is a crazy. dollar bet. So it was kind of crazy. Yeah. It's exciting. It's fun for us to goof around. Yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, like, I mean, what do you do when you're older? You find yeah. your little like vices and you like go to going, the casino. You go to the <laughs> casino and have a drink. Like that's how you yeah. relax. That's what you do. So we're gonna do something in Palm Springs because I believe they have casinos, kind of a yeah. few different ones there. Yeah. So know. we're gonna do Palm Springs. We've got a few dinners, and then we're gonna go to the outlets and like lay at the pool, of course, and we hopefully get a tan. And then on Thursday we'll get home. You guys, you guys are gonna get facials, which yes. you're yes. excited about. Um. So yeah, my mom got one last time. And she was like, your dad needs to get one too. So they get facials. <laughs> And then we're going to go to dinner at Craig's that day, which is like a big L.A. hot spot. I saw like Heather DeBro there last time looking frightening talking to the host. Like, uh, just I was really? like, wow, she's yeah, she didn't look like she was mean. She's just this oh, she wasn't happy. person. Oh, I got you. No, no, it, she didn't look even unhappy. I think that's just her face. Oh, it's really? Like, yeah, you know, a little Bethany Frankel, but like even scarier, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, yeah. just like, oh, I yeah, would not Bethany want her to yell a, at me. She's got a look. <laughs> Bethany, she, you know, she's interesting on um, TikTok. I want to interview her one day, though. Yeah, cool. I'll follow her. Um, then we have a comedy show that night at the comedy store, and then you guys go home. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So you excited for your, the rest of your trip? Oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> this has been fantastic and, and looking forward to it. Yeah. So much of a L.A. experience. Now you even got a podcast. So yeah, absolutely, you. right? You guys are pretty much influencers now. <laughs> there we go. One thing I always enjoyed growing up were the holidays because you guys always went all out, which was like very special. I feel like nowadays I like every holiday I like to, you know, Halloween dress up, like mm-hmm. Christmas, all the vibes. So um, do you have any like favorite memories growing up with like the holidays? And even though I was trying to ruin them with my camcorder. Um, <laughs> and Christmas you was the best, honestly, because we to this day. Mom doesn't put anything out under the tree until Christmas Eve. We dress <laughs> well, until Santa comes. Yeah. yeah, until Santa comes. And you guys embraced that and totally loved it. Even as adults, that's what you love. And not only do I have you guys at the house now, like I have my future son-in-law and I'll mm-hmm. have my son's girlfriend and um, my daughter's high school best friend who are now a part of our life and they want to be there on Christmas Eve and wake up Christmas morning and and now they have to wear the matching the everybody, outfits yes I, <laughs> everybody I have to buy a lot of pajamas every year but yeah. It's crazy. yeah you guys have always loved that and you you believed in just the spirit of Christmas I think because of that and mm-hmm. the only thing that really changed is that you've helped me carry all the gifts up put them yeah. under the tree on Christmas <laughs> Eve but that it's so much fun well you fun. probably purchase most of them Griff nowadays <laughs> it's so much fun for you guys to come downstairs in the morning and all the gifts be there and your stockings yeah. and your dad and I've always loved that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I specifically, I remember like even in college, like having friends that didn't really have like the best family life and then like being able to bring them home and you already have like an Easter basket made up for them. Yeah. And like, I just like, you know, life is so boring. So if we have like a holiday celebrate, like, let's just do it. Like have the fun <laughs> yeah. of it. 
Okay, well, thank you for coming on my show. Anything last you want to say before we wrap up? No, just so <laughs> so proud of you and love yeah. you so much and uh, uh, continued success. And, and we know you. We are you. very proud parents. Absolutely. Thanks. You guys will go down as my neediest guest. Just right. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Leave some comments below and be nice. And I'll see you guys in next week's episode. Yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs>